now I'm going to do an assessment of the cardiovascular system return demonstration. The cardiovascular system delivers oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and other important substances to the cells and organs of the body. It is important because it helps the body meet the demands of activity, exercise, and stress. Prior to the conduct of the procedure, first, I'm going to have to review my client's previous medical records if available. Next would be to prepare the necessary equipment needed to conserve time and energy. The equipments that I'm going to use include a pen light to be used as a tangential light source, a rectangular card, and a centimeter ruler to measure the patient's jugular venous pressure, and of course, a stethoscope. Third thing to do prior to the conduct of the procedure would be to do the hand hygiene to protect my patient and myself as well from infection and cross contamination. Good morning, sir. I'm Shikaina Aquino Maranga, your student nurse for today. And may I see your wristband, sir? Please take your complete name. I am Edgar Maranga. And your birth date, please? I was born at 13 and 67. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So today, I'll be assessing for your cardiovascular system, which means I'll have to check for your pulse on your neck, on your arms, and on your legs. And of course, listen for your um, heart sounds. Will that be all right? Okay. Do you have any questions or clarifications? Not so far. Okay, so would you mind if I close the door so no one from outside will be able to disturb you while we're doing the assessment? That sounds good. Okay. Okay, sir, so uh, is the room temperature fine with you? Are you comfortable? Okay. All right, so uh, let's begin with uh, just a short um, interview. Um, do you have any specific complaints? Are you feeling pain in your chest or in your extremities right no. now? Okay, and have you experienced shortness of breath, dizziness, headache, anything like that? No, so far so good. Okay, all right. That is good to hear and is there a uh, history of hypertension myocardial infarction um, coronary heart disease that has ever affected your family no okay and do you smoke no okay what are your uh, usual activities uh, i'm taking care of my little garden and uh, take care of my family. Okay, that is very nice. You have a garden. So what kind of garden is it? A vegetable. Mm -hmm. Organic vegetable. Wow. And I assume that you get your food from this vegetable garden you have. Yes, of course. Okay, that is nice. And uh, do you exercise? Quite sometimes. Okay. Thank you. So now let's begin with your assessment. So now let's get started with the assessment of the jugular vein and carotid arteries. Inspection of these vessels can provide information about the blood volume and pressure in the right side of the heart. First thing to do is to position the client supine with the head of the bed elevated between 30 to 45 degrees, making sure that the head and torso of the patient is on the same plane. Next would be to turn the patient's head slightly away from the side being examined and shine a tangential light source onto the neck and suprasternal area and the area around the clavicles to observe for any pulsations or shadows. If jugular distension is noted, assess for the jugular venous pressure by locating the highest visible point of distension of the internal jugular vein. And as deemed necessary, raise or lower the bed until the highest uh, visible point of distension could be observed. Note that the jugular vein should not be distended, bulging, or protruding 
at 45 degrees or greater. If so, it may indicate a right-sided heart failure. Now, measure the vertical distance in centimeter above the sternal angle by extending a long rectangular cord horizontally from this point and a centimeter ruler vertically from the sternal angle, making an exact right angle. Okay. Repeat on the other side. Proceeding now to the assessment of the carotid arteries. With the head of the bed elevated at 30 degrees, slightly turn the patient's head toward the side being examined and palpate for the carotid arteries very likely to avoid blocking circulation or triggering vagal stimulation and bradycardia, hypotension, or even cardiac arrest. And then palpate the carotid arteries individually because bilateral palpation of the carotid arteries may result to reduced cerebral blood flow. Feel for the amplitude of stroke and for thrills. Next thing to do is to use the stethoscope and place the bell of the stethoscope over the carotid arteries and listen for a brewy. A brewy is a blowing or swishing sound that is caused by a turbulent blood flow through a narrowed vessel, which is an indicative of occlusive arterial disease. Okay, sir, so now I'm going to proceed to inspecting your chest area. Okay. Proceeding now to the inspection of the heart or precordium, first thing to do is to begin with a general inspection of the chest wall. And I'm looking for any pulsations, uh, symmetry of movement, retraction, or heaves. Heaves are strong outward thrust of the chest, which I don't see. Okay. Now, simultaneously inspect the precordium for uh, pulsations while palpating for the aortic, pulmonic, and tricuspid and apical area. First, palpate for hips or lifts using the palm or hold the finger pads flatly or obliquely against the chest. Now press the ball of the hand firmly against the chest wall and um, feel for thrills. Thrills is a uh, vibratory sensation felt on the skin overlaying an area of turbulence which indicates a loud heart murmur caused by, a, caused by an incompetent heart valve. Now palpate for impulses using the finger pads flatly or obliquely on the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and apical area. Now palpate for the apical impulse using two to three finger pads. And for finer assessment, use one finger only 
to confirm the characteristic of the impulse. If unable to palpate uh, the apical impulse with the patient supine, then reposition the client to roll partly on his left lateral side and palpate again. Sir, can you please roll on your left side? Just a little bit. Okay. If still unable to palpate for the apical impulse, then ask the patient to uh, exhale fully and hold his breath for a moment. Sir, can you please breathe in and exhale? Exhale and then hold uh, your breath for a moment, please. Okay, you can uh, breathe now and lie on your back. Now inspect and palpate the epigastric area. Now, next thing to do is to um, assess the heart rate and rhythm of the patient by placing the diaphragm of the stethoscope on the patient's apical area. The diaphragm is used for hearing high-pitched sounds while the bell is best used to detect or differentiate uh, low-pitched sounds or gallop. Now using the diaphragm of the stethoscope first and then the bell, listen for the patient's heart sounds on his uh, four anatomic sites which are the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and apical area. So first I'm going to listen for his uh, aortic uh, area which, could, which is found at the right sternal border in the second intercostal space. Okay, now moving to the pulmonic area, which is found at the left sternal border, second intercostal space. Okay, now for the tricuspid area, which is found at the left sternal border, fourth intercostal space. And for the apical area, which is located at the um, fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular. Okay, then repeat these steps with patient um, facing his left lateral side and while the patient is sitting. Sir, I need you to roll partly on the left side. Okay. Um, inhale, exhale, and hold. Okay. Sir, I need you to. Oh. Okay. Okay, sir, now I need you to sit down and slightly lean forward. Now inhale, exhale, and hold. Once again, inhale, exhale, and hold. Now inhale, exhale, and hold. Okay. So, sir, now I'm going to be inspecting your arms and legs, okay? Okay. Let me see your hand. Okay, temperature is warm, skin color is consistent. Okay. Okay. No venous pattern. And I'm looking for any venous pattern, lesions or edema, which is which I don't see. Okay. And 
nail beds are pinkish and I don't see any clubbing on your nails. Now assessing for your uh, capillary refill. Capillary refill uh, indicates your peripheral perfusion and reflects cardiac output. Okay. Capillary refill is good. Now I'm going to uh, assess for your radial pulse. Okay, assessing for your ulnar pulse. Okay, and then assessing for your brachial pulse. Okay, good. Your um, pulses are bilaterally strong and greater than 2 plus, which means normal. Okay, now performing the Allen test which is done to test the patency of the ulnar and radial artery. Okay, sir, I need you to open and close your hands as quickly as you can and then uh, squeeze it after. Okay. Okay, and then um, open. Okay, then squeeze it again. Okay, then release. Okay, very good. Now I'm going I'm gonna have to repeat this step on the other side. Okay, sir, proceeding now to your lower extremities. I see that um the collar is consistent all over and hair is evenly distributed. Okay, and your um lower extremity feels warm okay I'm looking for any ulcerations edema or swelling venous pattern or varicosities and uh, palpating for firmness or tension in your calves okay okay now I'm going to be um, palpating for your pulse. So I'm going to start with your uh, popliteal pulse. Can you please raise your knee for me? Okay. And the other one. Please raise it for me. Okay. Okay, moving on to your dorsal spadis uh, pulse. Okay, both are equally strong and has a regular rhythm. Now for your posterior tibial. Okay, good. Both are strong and uh, has a regular rhythm. Now for uh, capillary refill. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, sir, now uh, we'll have to do the Poman's uh, sign test or the dorsiflexion sign test, which is a procedure to assess for deep vein thrombosis. Okay. Okay, sir, now we're done with the assessment of your cardiovascular system. And just to sum up everything that we've covered um, upon auscultation of your neck, I've heard no swishing or blowing sound. Pulses are equally strong, rated to plus, which means normal. Uh, no thrills noted. And your jugular venous pressure is at 6 centimeters of water with the bed elevated 30 degrees, which is good or normal and upon assessment of your chest wall of your heart or precordium um, chest movement is symmetrical no retractions no heaves or thrills um, pulsations or vibrations are palpated in the areas of the apex 
left sternal border or uh, base, okay? And heart rate is 75 beats per minute with a regular rhythm. So upon um, assessment of upon the assessment of your um, upper and lower extremities, arms are bilaterally symmetric with minimal variation in size and shape. No edema, uh, prominent venous patterning, skin is warm, capillary refill is good, um, your radial pulse, ulnar, and brachial um, pulses are bilaterally strong and has irregular rhythm, which is also very good. And upon performing the Allen test, where you were um, opening and closing your hand, um, result is good. And upon examining your legs, um, hair is evenly distributed, skin is warm, no edema, no lesions, and no swelling atrophy. And your popliteal pulse, um, dorsalis pedis, and posterior, posterior tibial pulses are all normal. They are equally strong and has a regular rhythm. Okay, so that's it and overall your cardiovascular system is doing very well okay i suggest that you keep on uh, consuming um healthy diet healthy food and um have a regular exercise okay okay um do you have any questions or clarifications no okay that's all for today. Thank you very much for your cooperation.